Hello, everyone. I'm Rick Martin, Director of Communications and Community Relations for Douglas County. Thank you for joining me and my special guests on a COVID update, COVID-19 update for Douglas County is Dr. Janet Meemark of Cobb and Douglas Public Health. Thank you, Dr. Meemark, for another update for our citizens. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me today. Dr. Meemark, so what's going on as far as the latest is concerned with Douglas County? Where are we with the numbers? So right now we're at just under 3,500 uh, cases of uh, COVID-19 in Douglas County. So 3,487 to be exact. Um, and we, unfortunately we, we have had 71 deaths total in Douglas County. Um, good news though is that our um, the 14 day case rate came down to 120 per 100,000. And remember 100 per 100,000 is a high transmission rate. So we're just over that. So it, big kudos, honestly, it's been going in the right direction and is definitely more containable or, or controllable at this rate. So based on the information, it appears that our citizens of Douglas County are being cooperative. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. I know it's not, you know, not everybody can do it 100% of the time, but I think we're doing enough of, of the things that we know of, right? Our three W's, so washing our hands, washing our distance and wearing our masks, plus avoiding large crowds. And that's making a huge impact. And so to be able to bring those numbers down so low, you remember we were over 400 per 100,000. It was very difficult for us to um, get control of what was happening. And at this rate, we are able to definitely do a little bit more in controlling the disease. Well, definitely want to say thank you, citizens of Douglas County. Thank you so much for heeding the call. Absolutely. Dr. Meemark, where does Wellstar Douglas stand right now, Wellstar Douglas Hospital? Yeah, so um, those um, numbers in the hospital fluctuate almost daily, pretty much, but um, they continue to have um, uh, extremely low critical care beds that are available. The um, medical surgical beds are, um, they're doing a little bit better, there's more room. But um, the number of COVID patients they have are pretty low though. And so that's good news. So this is from other other things that are happening that um, are requiring people to seek care. And so um, it's definitely, it's kind of a um, kind of normal um, operations at this point for Douglas um, Hospital. How's testing going in Douglas County? So testing is going really well. So we continue to test at the, the health center and then have some pop-up events so that we can move around the county a little bit. Um, but, you know, it's important that we continue to, to test. So this is how we're able to, to um, contain the disease. We got to know um, if you're carrying it, you may not have symptoms. And so um, remember, if you have been exposed to somebody um, with um, COVID-19 for more than 15 minutes, then we do recommend that you get tested. And, you know, as soon as if you get any symptoms, um, to go ahead and get tested, but otherwise after 10 days um, after exposure, you can get tested. But remember to um, uh, um, stay at home and, and quarantine yourself um, if you think you might have COVID-19 with symptoms or anything. Gotcha. Thank you. You mentioned last time we talked mm -hmm. the importance of getting a flu shot this, yeah. year, this season. Are flu shots available at the Douglas Public Health Center? And yeah. do you need to make an appointment? Yeah, so we do have some flu shots available over there, and we do ask that you recommend that you uh, make an appointment only to try to control the crowds and the waiting rooms and things like that. Um, but we have some there, but you don't have to just go there. You can go anywhere to get your flu shots. Just just get it is our recommendation. So whether it's CVS or your, your doctor's office, um, Kroger Publix, wherever, just get it as soon as you can. Gotcha, gotcha. So for anyone watching the news or looking at social media, there have been a lot of updates and discussion and conversation on the COVID-19 vaccine. But I want to specific, specifically sort of hear from you, our Cobb Douglas Public Health you know, director. Do we have any updates that we should pay attention to? Well, um, the latest update that I've seen is that um, Johnson & Johnson is, is um, the latest company to enter into phase three trials. So that's great. So the more um, people that are working on the vaccine, the better. Um, we are still anticipating by the end of the year that the vaccine will roll out. And right now it's looking like it's going to be a two vaccine series, either 21 or 28 days apart. Um, but um, remember, the first batch will be a limited batch of the vaccine. And so um, not all of the companies will be ready to go 
know, and, and there will only be a certain amount that's, that will be put out. We don't know yet who will be um, the first um, group of people that will get vaccinated, um, but um, we'll definitely keep you abreast of that. And we're continuing to work on the process of getting people vaccinated. And so um, right now, um, not a whole lot, but it's continuing to go along. We would expect that more vaccine will be after the first of the year as it gets rolling, and then they'll be putting out more and more vaccine. And so we'll be involved with um, doing mass vaccinations wherever it's needed. Got you. So October is coming up shortly. Yeah. And with October coming up, what's on the minds of many people uh, is Halloween, mm -hmm. trick-or-treating. Yeah. The sheriff's office announced recently that they have canceled their truck trunk or treat um, event. And just recently, the county announced we have canceled our trick-or-treating at the courthouse event. Yeah. But still, but still, there are ways people can enjoy. Isn't that true? Yeah, absolutely. And so um, um, they're canceling those events because they're probably the higher risk methods of doing this, right? And yes. so uh, having people out and in, in gathering in large crowds and doing a lot of face-to-face -face interactions together, that's definitely a higher risk um, situation. So when you go to the CDC guidelines, there's some that um, guidelines there to help you a little bit and, and just kind of different transmission and risk levels that you can look at. So, you know, if you can do it so that it's kind of a one-way thing where, you know, candy is after you've washed your hands or wear gloves and it, it gets handed out kind of in a one-way direction and not, you know, sticking your hands in or large groups, you know, together, then that's the better way to do it. If you can kind of drive by or um, do it in small pods, you know, like your family or close family and close friends and small groups that can do scavenger hunts or um, just something that you keep a little bit more contained is, a, is a, the recommendation right now. But kind of going back and forth with the candy is not recommended. Um, there's a couple of things I wanted to make sure people knew was uh, one is um, make sure that um, if you are going to be doing any sort of um, you know, um, trick or treating or anything around other people that you remember that mask, that cloth uh, or fabric mask or whatever kind of mask that you have, the, the um, costume mask does not um, replace that. So just making sure everybody knows that. And then, you know, and don't have the costume mask over the cloth mask. Um, that could be a potentially dangerous situation. So you just want to be mindful of those kind of things and being careful that you don't um, accidentally not get enough airflow because you've got you know too many of the masks on that's um, right. that's doing that. Um, and then um, um, just making sure that you know you're just looking at your crowd sizes and and how much interaction you're having. Um, if you can kind of get that down to lower risk activities, that's probably the the better way to go. But I wanted to piggyback on this a little bit if I could about holidays yes. coming up because we're all planning for our holidays as well. And so there are important things to remember. So I I know you know, we probably all miss our families that live in different states and everybody wants to all get together all at once. And, and so there are just important things to remember, you know, remembering kind of what your transmission levels are and where you are. So Douglas is doing pretty well, right? So at 120 per 100,000 is pretty good. But, you know, we have 22 states are having a surge right now. Um, you really, or even in, within our own state, if there's um, an area, there are still areas that are over a thousand per 100,000. And so just being very careful about, you know, I, you know, having a family member or friends come from an area that may be endemic and have very, very, very high rates of transmission come over to in intermingle with everybody. Um, having it indoors with windows shut and low ventilation is not a good idea. If you can do something outdoors with all your kind of mitigation stuff with the, the masks and staying, uh, you know, six feet apart, things like that. Um, and being outdoors is probably the safer way to go. Um, if you, you have to get together with your, your friends and family, um, you know, uh, maybe asking them, like, if everybody could try their best to, you know, stick to themselves and not do too much um, going out and about for two weeks, um, maybe you're going to meet with grandma and you don't, nobody wants to make, get grandma sick, right? Mm -hmm. So if we can all, like, for two, okay, two weeks before, you know, Thanksgiving, let's make sure that we don't, you know, interact a lot with other people and maybe get tested before you come. We'll probably cut down things a little bit, but we all know, like, you know which family members are doing pretty good with all of your social distancing and masks and stuff, but you know the ones that aren't, right? <laughs> and so, That's right. And so, uh, 
this is a time where you really, um, it, it's such a joyful event to be with people and, you know, and we've seen it for weddings and parties, but then when you have tragedy after that, it's really horrific. And there are things that you can do ahead of time to try to decrease that um, transmission. And so it's not that you don't have to do it, but try to put some steps in place that you can try to protect the, the vulnerable people at your house. So simply said with all that um, that you shared, it's the best way to mitigate the spread, right? Yeah, absolutely. The same things that we've been doing, but just be, I know we want to let off the gas pedal and just be really careful about that when you're bringing in people that are not part of your usual daily activities and from other states, you, you might have to, you know, take a look at that. That's good. That's good. Thank you. Is there anything else you would like to tell the residents of Douglas County? Well, the only thing is that you're doing great. Keep up the great work. Um, please, let's not let off the gas pedal and let this thing get out of hand. You know, schools have been back in session and it has not created a, um, you know, a, a really bad transmission um, level at this time. So, we're doing a really good job, so please, let's just keep going. So wear your mask, um, watch your distance, wash your hands, no big crowds, and get your flu shot. Super. Dr. Me, Mark, this has been great, and I hope you will come back and join us again sometime soon, would you? Yes, well, maybe we'll do some trick-or-treating online. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. Dr. Me, Mark, thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate it. Thank you. Have a great day.